the same apply to people of African rates in Texas. Um, you know, access to roads, you know, because you know, in, in, in urban land generally, it's because you know you pay rates in Texas and then the state sort of maintain the area, etc. So, so how does it? Do you know how it works in that space? You know, like who does the roads? Who does what? Um, so maybe starting with the question of rates in Texas, there's no rates in Texas. Mm -hmm. So it's only the ones of fee. Yeah, because there's no mass, there's no mass balance. Mm. Also, it belongs to the state. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so there's no rates in Texas. So, um, the the question of serviceability of the land is really up to you as the as the lessee of the of the land, especially for the the, the corporate yeah. the use of it. The residential side is a bit different because then there's a question of service delivery. Yeah, 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 from you know, so the municipality will come and build a road. Um, they will bring in water and, and connect electricity. But the, I mean, you pay for the electricity, but water is free. Mm -hmm. The roads are free. But then the guys that are running farms, they build their own roads in the farms. Mm -hmm. um, so they essentially they, upgrade to the area for yeah. the benefit of use for the owners yeah. themselves. Yeah. So you take care of that if you if you find a big chunk of land and you're leasing it from Ngonyama and you want to develop it into a farm, a, a conference area or mine, whatever, you are responsible for all of that. Um, the municipality can give you access to the municipal infrastructure for you to connect onto um, with the electricity, with the water, but um, the, rest, the rest of it is exact. So, so Midlands, is, is that private owned or is that also in the, the trust? Uh, the, the Midlands is formal, it's, it's, well, it's, it's effectively farmland um, and these are farms that were already owned by white people long before 94. So those farms, <laughs> those, are, those are already privately owned farms. Okay. Yeah, um, generally it's not in Gwanyama Trust land. In Gwanyama Trust land um, is mostly in areas where there are chiefs and, and uh, stuff like that. Okay. It's just that it, 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 it's land that is on the outskirts or in between the kings and chiefs. And then the the, 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 the king takes those, takes those ones. Yes. Yeah, so like I um, I know a case in um, between Kufu and Lamisa. Um, there's some guys that came that came there to do a game reserve. They, they, they built it up like not long ago, maybe less than 10 years ago. Um, they, they came, it was open land, people used to go and hunt there and the cattle used to graze around in there, there was roads, park, pathways to other areas. And um, they didn't go to the um, local chiefs, they went to Ingonyam and they came and they closed the whole thing, they put uh, animals in there. Yeah. Okay, so, so I guess maybe this, is, this explains why, you know like when we go to KZN and you know, you go to Ayati and all these places. Mm. And then we were like, how is this place such a, you know, it's built in a, it's like a CBD. Well, not CBD, it's almost like a North Cliff, like like on a hill, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, I suppose this is historically, because it doesn't seem safe to me sometimes. I'm like, someone could literally fall there, you know when you see like... Um, oh, the houses are like this. Yeah, um, I guess it's, a, it's a, like a historical thing. Yeah, that one is apartheid. <laughs> 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 the they tried, they tried to support it straight up. Um, they, 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 remember initially they, they didn't want people in the in the city, yeah. so they had to yeah. put them on the outskirts. It's so, like, but it's the, like the homeland. Uh, uh, it's of like the, the yeah, it wasn't it wasn't even homeland in the scenario because it's it's just around the city. So it's oh. like it's like what they did with Soweto. So, so you, know, you, you throw, push yeah. push from, all the guys from just, Sofia, just, Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So it's what they did. They put black people there. I mean, it was a terrible place, yeah. honestly. It's, it's a terrible um, terrain of land to build homes. Especially. And it's like it's like this, and there's homes like this stacked up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it, it looks nice when you have money and then you've got proper infrastructure. <laughs> and then you do proper construction. You know, you know. <laughs> civil engineers. And yeah, stuff. yeah. But I mean, there it's it's really terrible, and people just safe, yeah. yeah, it's not it's not. Yeah, safe. just if you look at even weather, rains, and it's almost similar to like if you look at the favelas in Brazil. It's almost the same kind of setup with hills and then houses on top of each other. And because they're most, almost like really informal type of structures that doesn't really look safe. But now obviously the challenge over and above the land is this far into the democracy of the country, even to relocate where would you put the people? Like people are settled, that's the other thing. Now people don't want to leave. 
that's the thing. That um, it's 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 um, it's it's uh, he, the only alternative is to take them away from the city, and they they won't want to leave the city because yeah. I mean that's where you work, so you leave infrastructure is here. Um, if you say people must leave there and go um, leave where, where yeah. are they gonna go? Yeah. There isn't there isn't enough develop, uh, developed developed um, areas close enough to the city and affordable enough because there, there is some nice places just outside of Devon uh, but uh, yeah. the prices are ridiculous yeah. so you're not going to move people from the township and move them there so it's impossible so, 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 so just to just to digress a bit uh, the, since we've established that Ingram Trust is a SOE so now how does it benefit the people how do we go back to say this thing is actually doing something for, for, for the people. Does it does it give out bursaries to to, to to kids there? Does it uh, do they, are they building clinics? You mean like from, from the money it makes? Yeah, from the money it makes. Like it's, because it's any form of CSI from the from England. No, I, I want to understand like okay fine. I get it now we've we have we have said that fine, uh, 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 this this thing belongs to the king. But they can't, we can't have it, the, the king needs to have subjects. So how does it actually benefit those subjects? I want to understand. Yeah, yeah, maybe you should ask it like this. I'll tell you what I'm I think, I think the benefit is there. Like you get land, you don't pay rates and taxes. You only pay once if you pay. So there's this implicit benefit from you accessing it and they are the custodians. And then um, I suppose the question you are asking is, uh, when the king gets allocated money, budget, how does that get spent? What do they do with it? Because it's the I, I, I get I get that, man. Like not all of us want to stay in case it and what if I wanna go be a doctor and come back? That's, like my point is that how does that how does how does uh, the trust actually help me if I'm from <laughs> there? <laughs> you know? Are you talking about implicit, like direct benefits? Where, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. like, to the average person, like, even if I have no, int if I'm from the or I have not really any direct intention to farm or whatever, but as a resident of that area, are there any trickle down effects to, like, the subject as you are thinking? Yeah, like, because I can go, like, be like Nachi BSCA and then come back okay. there to help them. You know, or I can be a doctor, go study at Reds, come back, build a clinic there. Is a trust doing stuff like that? incentivizing people yeah. to like, I guess. Yeah, no, look, the, the, the question on the CSI aspect of it, um, I don't know about Ingonyama Trust directly. Mm -hmm. I know the Royal House um, um, has quite a number of, of programs that are CSI. Mm -hmm. um, from, um, uh, what's, what do you call it, M uh, mentoring girl children to mm -hmm. um, Bursaries to uh, helping out uh, small-scale farmers. There's, there's there's quite a number of programs that they do. Um, um, my 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 only thing, and this is my personal view, of course. I mean, the programs exist. They are there. We know they are there. We we see them happen. I I personally don't think that they're happening at the, at a large enough scale, mm. you know, to make a real difference. Um, the the, um, take for instance the, the, the small scale farmers that are in KZN. Um, so how the, the, the program would work is, for instance, there'd be, there'll be a tractor um, that's allocated for all the guys and then there's someone that coordinates and then you essentially pocket it comes and does uh, tilling, the land, you know, mm -hmm. tilling your land and then, and then that's, you don't pay for it. Um, um, they assist with uh, crop planning, they, uh, they give out um, seeds, all of that stuff. But you're not doing anything to help these guys scale up, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So you find someone that has been working land, but he still has the same plot of land that he had 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he's still doing the same thing every year. It's, 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 it's essentially, you know, sustenance farming as opposed to you know, assisting the guys to mm. grow, to grow on the corporate side. So I think that's the that's that's my uh, reservation with it. But to answer the question of whether or not it's there, yes, it is there. You know, it's like uh, yeah. South Africa's um, uh, water access uh, ratio. It's it's ninety percent because the, t the the pipes are there connected, but is the water really flowing every day? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um yeah, so the, the technical answer is yes, but the you know substantive it's answer faster pace. Nah, it's not moving fast enough. Mm. What do you think in your opinion, just at a high level, what could be done different to just improve because you made a good point, you said that look it's probably not happening at the rate it should be. I mean, there's a lot of causes. A lot of these issues are now coming under review because people are saying 95 was a long time, uh, 94, sorry, was probably a while back. So now, in terms of progress that's been made, if someone is just being under the confines of being a subsistence farmer, what needs to happen with all parties involved, over and above the trust, to help people scale up? Because it's not really beneficial for that person, the trust, or even the people in that area, if people just remain as subsistence farmers. Even if it's besides access to capital, what could be done different to for it's for them to increase the access of the assistance and also just to help people to scale up. Um, I mean, the, 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 there's simply the, 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 yeah. the, There's quite a number of things, but I think the starting point is to get rid of co-ops. Yeah. Uh, that thing is useless. Yeah, that that yeah. yeah. doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, that thing and is that's useless. That's across the country. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so whenever they run, um, you know, farming programs, they want people to form co-ops, mm. um, and then you've got. Um, 15, 20 people on, on a 10 hectare or even less uh, plot of land um, and it just becomes a nightmare to run because none of these people have got you know a corporate background um, that allows them to run this thing you know as a business foreman instead it's them that are working uh, for providing the labor themselves um, and um, obviously some people work more than others some, some are lazy some, you know, the, the dynamics just become a nightmare. Yeah, it becomes it's a nightmare. I was talking to my uncle now in December. They had a co-op and they and they and they had to dismantle it. And then I'm asking him why because he was a he was, was the chairperson. So I'm asking him what happened. <laughs> He's like, no, I realized I was working for other people then. Yeah. Because he so when when it's time to work the the the, the land, he would bring everyone at home. So take out. He's got a, a very big family, you know, so he's got like nine kids and most of them have kids of their own which yeah. are grown. So he's coming there with like 10 people, 15 people to come work and then someone comes in and comes with himself and maybe he's one or two kids, yeah. you know, and then in the end you can't, you can, it's, it's not going to happen. So it's things like that that I, I think uh, you need to uh, change the mentality first to say how you approach it. Approach it as businesses, individual businesses, let people work as individuals then you're going to see actual progress. Otherwise, ah, you won't see nothing. Yeah, because I think that, that structure, it's, it's tried and even outside of say it, it hasn't really worked. Because you're right, scalability, ultimately you need people who can run this thing as a business. So you probably find the admin of people working the land and trying to run it. And there's many of you, and like if you think of this 15 people on, on like 10 hectares or even less, that just doesn't work, it's ridiculous. What, What's, what's required, in my opinion, is probably more initiatives where through with government or graduates, people who have experience from either corporate, special and agribusiness space, they need to set up structures and vehicles that can help subsistence farmers over a set period of time scale up, have their tar the, the, the targets. But a lot of the, then the, the challenge with some of these things comes is in the people aspect, because from the moment you can suggest something like this, then between the trust and political influence, government, it comes who is going to the, the, I think a lot of stumbling blocks in some of these things is the first question is the people who are asked to run these things and then it becomes who do you know and why do you qualify even if you're on paper you're the best person for this initiative it's a it's actually it's actually it's a people challenge yeah, but it's also like a, a typical South African education because you start there man. Yeah. I think the reason we might understand better because we are educated so Generally, you need people to educate you, then the mindset will change. But do you see, that's where, that's where I was going. Like, this is an opportunity, maybe, for the trust to sort of educate people. Don't you guys think so? Yeah, or, or even traditional schools. Just like, I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're doing, um, if you're in case of that, this should be, or if anywhere in the country, actually, this should be part of a curriculum. Mm. Yeah. How this works, it's practical. It's, you know how they say, we can use your hands to work, and they say you can remove work. Yeah. And welding. Yeah. This sounds like one of those things which you know that you could do this and then you can then equip yourself. Knowing upfront that there's an opportunity right there, there's an excess to learn. And if you actually um, learn what you need to learn to be able to achieve what you want to achieve, it's actually global. Yeah, and also changing the mentality. I think that's where the chiefs will probably come in, like whatever initiatives are instituted. 
like what you're speaking to is basically opening people up in those areas to the ideas that look there's a different way to do it and it's not going to be structured and obviously if the chiefs sign off on it then some from the starting point if we're saying we're no longer going the co-op route selling people on why that doesn't work anymore and what the new model works because sometimes the resistance might be at a communal level but once the chief chiefs Ghana and traditionally they have a lot of respect if it comes from the trust of the royal house to say look this is how we're going to do it you find the resistance might be less and then also the education side of it to the miser point of maybe more CSI for not quality. If you start educating people even just over and above corps, let's run it like this. This is your skill, this is how you can contribute. You don't have to be the chief or the head of the chairman of a corp and you're also working the land. If you're the chairman, these are your duties, you're more of an overseer. So I think uh, there's a lot of the battles with some of these things, they are nice in principle. But if there's no buy-in from the people who are actually made to benefit from these things, we've seen some of these cases outside of just live issues where money is put into things by private or government, but it never really takes off because people didn't buy into the idea or they didn't see the benefit from them for them long term. Yeah, look, I think most of the problems actually just sit on mentality, yeah. in all honesty. Because um, the, the, the one aspect is um, we, we, we should be um, um, opening up our minds to different possibilities. I mean, farming is not the only thing we can do with land. Um, it, it, honestly, it's not. The trust stops. Mm. You know, there, there's quite a lot you can do, but we, we, we tend to zoom in to one thing, and, and we do that consistently, consistently. Um, but, but I mean, you look around here in Joburg, honestly, you drive out, um, 10 k's outside of the city, you, you, it's farmlands really, but there's, there's flats that are going up there, yeah. all over the place. That's um, and that's because it's a different use of the land. It's still, it's still, it's still the use of the land, but it's a different use of land. Uh, and similarly, um, in, in, in rural areas as well, it's going to be the same thing. The, the municipal, uh, municipally demarcated land is limited, and the towns and the cities that are there can only grow so much within that confined space. Eventually, you, you're gonna have to go outside. Um, and when that time comes, if you are, if you as the owners of the land, being the black people, um, are not ready or are not up to, are not in sync with that development, you'll wake up and the, that same land that is traditional land is going to be um, um, occupied by white people again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing that's happening with Chongat Hulet. Yes. They, they came to Ingonyama, they got land to farm sugar cane. Um, over, over the years, they realized, nah, this thing is, not, is no longer working. They're converting to property, property, to property development now. Yes. That's what they're doing. And they're using Ingonyama, Ingonyama land. Yes. It, it's, because they've, they've gotten the right to do it. Mm, you know, um, and it, it just takes a change in mentality and a change in you know, approach, substantially. Because for most people, when you say um, you must have land and farm. I mean, not all of us can farm. Um, trust you know, um, <laughs> guess you would know. Uh, trust, trust me, like, we've seen this movie plan. I think what, it's a very good point, but I think one thing you have to really understand the, just the what's required and the aptitude, and farming is very time intensive before we can talk anything else. It's a full on what the notion that you can farm by remote controls and myth. Uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, I was going to say, because I think we're 45 now, mm -hmm. uh, maybe just to try and, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up not to talk for too long. I wanted to ask you, interesting enough, you are in farming, you know, um, you know, without really going into the details, how are you finding it and what kind of sort of, you know, led you to, to do it? Like you said, it's not easy, uh, but you had the desire to do it. <laughs> um, and what sort of help are you getting, you know, some sort of assistance? Okay, on the question of what, how did I end up there, um, I happened to be born in the wrong family. <laughs> in all honesty. It's a high family. Uh, um, so it's something we grew up doing at home from the time I was a kid. Um, so it's cool. Yeah, it's something I, I grew up doing. I, my maybe earliest memory of it was like early primary school, maybe grade three, grade four. Um, we used to go on the weekends or school holidays, we'd go camp there and stuff. So it's, it's something I grew up doing. But um, also, um, over time, as I started working, I, started, I, I realized it can help me send less money home. 
so I put <laughs> money in that thing. You know? Um, so but it's Conker's not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, the, there's no money for Conker, I'm trying to say. <laughs> Um, so that's that's really how I ended up doing it. Um, obviously now I'm trying to scale it up that it becomes bigger. Um, and really the the, the challenge um, it goes back to that question I was talking about earlier of um, how do you access the land? Do you, do you go to to a family and buy it from them, or do you go to the chief? Um, I, I, Initially, my approach was to go to approach different people that I know who own land, and I can see them sitting there unused. And I speak to them, and we agree uh, everything is alright. Then uh, two is down the line, somebody tells you, no, actually my uncle says they want to use this thing, or someone else now has an idea. You know, it, 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 it's All of a sudden. yeah, you know, it, so it, it becomes a frustrating thing. Um, so I've struggled with that um, over the past say, two years or so now. It, 2019, so maybe about three years now. Um, but I think the so what I'm what I'm doing now is I'm 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 I'm, I'm getting money and then I'm gonna go and just go to the chief and okay. buy and buy a big tract of land. Okay. Um, I think for the purpose of what I want to do, it's it's going to be easier. Um, I mean I I have access to smaller pieces of land that I'm using now, but they're not anywhere close to what I need. Um, yeah. So. Obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll need to do that. But obviously, if you go to the chief, it's not the same as you know buying from cash, um, where we can negotiate and I give him twenty thousand or something and you're fine. Chiefs want real money. Not going there. <laughs> and you know, I think I think yeah. we just get an audience for the chief. There's protocol that need to be followed. So I think, but I, like you're saying, for the scale of or size of land that you need, it's probably worth it in the end to go there and then also not have any future disputes. Because I think a lot of what you might find with especially traditional land, gentlemen's agreements don't normally cut it. Where at some point you've agreed, the next thing you've already started, and it's an uncle who said, No, we've changed our mind. Once it's the chief who's the custodian, if everything's been paid off, if you follow the proper channels, then that's probably the best way to go that has the least any recourse on your days. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the other issue. Um, family owned land eh, is, uh, is, is chaotic. It's chaotic. You yeah. you'll speak to Miser, he'll sell it to you, you pay him, you are done. Um, and then as you start working, somebody my, else my comes. Cousin comes. Yeah, his yeah. cousin is like, No, this is my grandfather's land, it's my what and my yeah. and then you've got a long debate so you know, But you know, it, it that normally happens with land that is being used commercially. If you are go if you're buying the land to build a property and live in it, it, it hardly ever happens. Because nobody nobody has you know, uh, an interest in it. Yeah, uh, because you're not it, making it, money. Yeah, you're, you're not making money. But the minute you're making money off it, mm -hmm. then it becomes tricky. And I think that's that's been probably my, my, my biggest stumbling block so far. But I think with my um, plan now, I think it should, I should be fine. So... Um, Out of interest, um, do you know what is Land Bank's stance on this? <laughs> Like, do they, do they entertain this, you know, land bankers? Because, I mean, the, sort of their mandate is to try and, you know, I remember we had a, we had a conversation with them at one of our investment clubs, you know, telling us that they're doing this process of, you know, um, uh, helping black people to buy farms, um, helping them maybe even to transition from white hands to black hands, and putting like a, you because know, some of these guys were actually their clients. You know? most, most, most of land bank's clients are commercial farmers, maybe established families. For them, for them to, to, to say that uh, they will help with a transition, maybe they're, they're talking about facilities. Yes, if they say, you know, you basically this big or you need to have this much experience or not, I'm just not sure. Um, with Land Bank, I, I'm not entirely sure um, of their appetite for rural, you know, land. Mm -hmm. um, the only bank I'm sure of that, that entertains the idea is the town. Um, land bank, I know them that it's not that they focus on farming, but they want you to buy a farm that exists for them. So, yeah, yeah. So, so if you are if you are not buying a farm, you want to establish one, then they don't want to it. Not as far as I know, I don't think so. so those losses are bad. It's still a bank, but I don't really hate that bank. Yeah. But I mean, if there was a doubt, I remember there was a doubt that the farmers could things tend to, to, to 
But like what Nachi is saying, Nachi now wants to come. Lengo is not going to change the chart. Okay, I mean, yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah, maybe just to do some, some uh, I don't want to say fluffy, it sounds like any change. Um, <laughs> but let, let's say for the sake of you know, fluffy stuff, um, I think we're going to go through a rough period right now. You know, um, petrol is insane, um, money is losing behaviors, you know, inflation mm. is going to be bad. Um, America is increasing interest rate. So you can just see over the next you know, couple of years, it's going to be crazy. I saw someone asking a question on Twitter the other day. They said, have you started cutting down um, on your expenses? You know? And I saw a lot of people sort of, you know, yeah, you know, this TV compact and this. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but instead of cutting down, I actually just believe in like, rather than more income. Because cutting down is literally almost impossible. I think what people struggle with is, so far, it's, it's funny, but people get accustomed to a certain way of life. You can downgrade your DSTV, but if it doesn't come with the cartoon channels, that's a fight in the house. So, and over, that's just a small example. It's easier said than done to cut down, like to be intentional finances, to start paying off cards, closing accounts, and then it becomes a case of, I'm now gonna buy things on cash. It's, it's nice in principle, but to actually, or like austerity is exactly like the word it says, it's, pain, it's meant to be paying for the belt tightening, like we all tight, right? Less meals out. These trips, uh, I was talking to a car uh, salesman the other day in terms of they actually had a lot of inquiries of people trying to downsize their cars purely based on just the petrol increases, but not probably to the scales of where it's just, it's not a whimsical decision that I'm saying where you can just decide that I'm going to cut down. It's nice in principle, but you'd rather do that. For those who get it, it's necessary. But dependence also, depending on your financial situation, how many people you're supporting. Like taxes, another thing that doesn't run away. If you have dependents or parents that you're taking care of, then you might want to make the cut downs. But with the way things are heading, and like Jesus rightfully saying, it's probably going to get worse, you might want to start cutting down sooner rather than later. But just the feasibility of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, one thing that we've seen with the ability to take it is one thing that has sort of been exposed. Um, people are not ready for this. The fact that we miss that culture, especially in South Africa. So maybe we are in a scenario where we are experiencing high inflation, low, uh, high inflation and low growth. That's, that's the kind of scenario South Africa is. So, so, so I had an interesting conversation with one of the guys this morning. I mean, like the US is in full employment, the economy is overheating, the inflation is high, they need to hike rates. For emerging markets like South Africa, that's capital outflow, so they need to hike interest rates. So, will the Reserve Bank hike rates to... It's the only thing they always do, man. <laughs> anything happens, they just move the interest rates. Just because that's so, yeah. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> so if, to, if there was no COVID, they were never going to... <laughs> <laughs> so, to, to, to answer Jesus, to, to, to highlight what Jesus is saying, I mean, like... I'm, I'm speaking from experience, paying all, paying all the debt, but I mean, like, if you don't get extra income, it's like you're still in a circle. You need know, yeah. you, you extra income. Yeah, I think it, it would take a serious adjustment to mm -hmm. downgrade lifestyle. Yeah. It's, it's not something you can just do, you know, you'd have some strong mental strength mm -hmm. to do that because um, to. to to willingly downgrade lifestyle. But I mean, I, there's, there's obvious things like, I'm not gonna go on a trip. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't have the money to do it anyway, so I'm not yeah. gonna go on the trip. I was never going on a trip. Yeah, yeah. you know, but yeah. it's it's a different story to say, I'm gonna move out of my house mm. and, and go leave the cast. Yes. Uh, yes. This one is a, is a serious thing. It's yeah. not gonna happen. Yeah. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna divorce in China. <laughs> <laughs> Find yourself yeah. in divorce court. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah but you're catching GSTV. But it's one of the things that it's a conversation that we need to have. As probably, is it right to say the black middle class? There's nothing wrong with down there. I think we, we've done it so many times. I think, I think what you shared, Miser shared this um, article with me where he said. I think about 50% of the tax collected came from about 600,000 people. Yeah. So, like, I mean, yeah, so only 600,000 people can contribute. Maybe afford to cut because they are tax paid. Mm -hmm. Which, I assume, that's, that's uh, income tax, personal income tax. Yes. 
folk in the streaming business. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm saying if it's six hundred thousand, assume imagine people that don't pay tax, but they earn whatever they earn. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, the asset prices is different. You know what I mean? Like when you talk like dual income, I wonder how does that apply to their work? Because these are the people that work ten hours a day. Mm. You know what I mean? These are the people that. And they walk. Yes, yes, yeah. uh, because they want to save money. Yeah, there's no money for for taxes. They walk. Um, so, but I mean, guys can do that. Ladies, maybe they can't because yeah, I mean, it's not safe at night and all of that. You know, so it's 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 possible with some things, but it's not entirely gonna make a really big difference in your life. I don't think so. Like Jesus saying, that he's right. What you need is no money. It's like uh, what's, what's his name? The soft guy, smooth. <laughs> Don't give me advice. Yeah. Give, me five million. Million. Yeah. give me five million. Yeah. Yeah. Give me five million and we talk. He was yeah. ahead of his time. Eh? Yeah. 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 Despite the presentation of the message, ultimately, yeah, I think probably the best way is, is this solid advice. Just look for more ways to generate income. Mm. Legal ways. Yeah. Legal, yeah. Ways. Yeah. Legal yeah. ways. Legal ways. Yeah. And pay taxes on those sides also. It's, it's, the, the tax man can always do it. But I think, yeah, just the one good thing, like it's almost like with COVID, what you find with some of these things is if you're forced into you're backed into a corner, you probably become more resourceful and creative in terms of especially if you need separate passive income. Mm-hmm. So just look at the I think everyone's but even if you're a full on career professional, most of us if you're really put there's things you can sell outside. I don't give it even something simple selling cupcakes to you know, the kids school or whatever the case might be, there's always something that you can do in terms of finding other income because that's probably something that you can always continue to scale up as you can only shrink your expenses so much at some point you, have to, you can only tighten the belt so many points but yeah, I think that's exactly the point yeah. you can only go so far in, in, in I, 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 I hope people are not going to take this the wrong way I feel like a lot of people have an obsession with how they look in front of other people that's why they can't it's not even an obsession they can't, they can't, they can't uh, no no that, that's, that's not even an obsession I look, that's just human nature I think for for all intents and purposes, people are subconsciously or consciously are intentional about how you want to be perceived, your place in your community, your society. So you might find people might hold up the old the old adage of keeping up appearances is it's not even a snobbish or classist thing. It's just that you want to be it's human nature basically, you know. But at the same time, it just becomes a case of prioritize what's important within the current situation. If petrol is going to continue going up, we don't know where this in Ukraine Russian crisis is going to take us. So I think that just becomes a case of the choice is really yours of how you prioritize. But Jesus solution like is in the essence is kind of thing. Uh, yeah, what's for this? Just look for more income. No, you'll probably keep your room and you'll probably have And have more peace at home. Yeah, so so I mean yeah, that was great. Um yeah, thanks Nike for coming through. No. Um yeah, we'll probably invite you um over time as well as you need to get more information on um as you progress with the journey. Um all the best on that. I think it's quite inspiring. And um, yeah, I think maybe a, a cash miser um, business agenda. We probably we probably shouldn't say how many times we're gonna record because yeah, I was yeah. listening to episode seven and we're busy making promises <laughs> there. Like, like you know what? I think I think going forward, just expect yeah. content. We'll keep you in the loop. Yeah, you know, it's a obviously <laughs> steady flow of content. And obviously through the socials, we'll be announcing as and when things are coming, where they're available. But yeah. I think we've uh, we've paid our school fees in terms of knowing mm-hmm. when to roll out and schedule and. The intensity of putting this content together, so we're not going to promise anything we can't deliver on. For sure. I mean, and then, and sorry, sorry, and, and shout out to Bond Rose, the sponsor. Yes, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, I'm waiting for the banner, oh, um, yes. um, and I'm also waiting for the check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, maybe a special shout out to Sam. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah we're hoping we're going to make some more things happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Nachi, uh, how about him today? No, the, it was it was cheap. It was two fifty. <laughs> 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 there was a sale. There was a sale. I'm a Chelsea fan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe we don't know for how long. You know, we don't know. Been in yeah, for as long as Chelsea exists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, to the end. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much um, for pulling through. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah. And all the best. Um, 
to everybody else, I think yeah, we're gonna change the pages from property corner to business agenda. Um, I think Spotify, SoundCloud, you know the drill. Um, it's all gonna be there, and this time around, yeah, you should yeah subscribe. Blah, click, blah, blah, click the bell notification icon so you get notifications. Yeah, pass the pod, pass, share your share the channel because we are now on YouTube. So all those good things would be most appreciated for you. Alright, cool. Um, uh, cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Ooh. As always. As always. That's it. Thanks so much, Mr.